Are you ready for today's learning? Thursday the 25th of June. Let's go. So read your questions, then read your extract, then think about the sentence then that you're going to use to introduce your answer. Pause me now. Adverb is used to describe how Peter got down from the wheelbarrow and why didn't Peter care when Mr McGregor caught sight of him. Peter got down very quietly off the wheelbarrow and started running as fast as he could along a straight walk behind some black currant bushes. Mr McGregor caught sight of him at the corner but Peter did not care. He slipped underneath the gate and was safe at last in the wood outside the garden. So what adverb is used to describe how Peter got down from the wheelbarrow? How did he get down? He got down quietly. So the adverb to describe how Peter got down from the wheelbarrow is quietly. And why didn't Peter care when Mr McGregor caught sight of him? Peter didn't care that Mr McGregor caught sight of him because he was out of the garden. He knew he could get out of the garden, escape and be safe at last. Read your questions, read your extract to find the answers, think of your sentence stems. Now, who does the jacket and shoes belong to and why has Mr McGregor hung them up? Mr McGregor hung up the little jacket and the shoes for a scarecrow to frighten the black birds. So who does the jacket and shoes belong to? The answer isn't there. We know whose they are. Whose are they? The jacket and the shoes belong to Peter Rabbit. And why has Mr McGregor hung them up? Mr McGregor has hung them up as a scarecrow to frighten the blackbirds. Read your question. Read the extract. What is your sentence then that's going to give me the answer? Pause me now. Why does Peter wait until he got to the big fir tree to look behind himself? Peter never stopped running or looked behind him until he got to the big fir tree. So why does Peter wait until he got to the big fir tree to look behind himself? Peter waited until he got to the big fir tree to look behind himself because if you've ever been in a race, if you're too busy looking who's either side of you, you're not concentrating on what you need. And so Peter knew this. He knows that he needed to concentrate on running home because what's at home? Safety is at home. So if he carries on running and running and gets home and he's safe at home, that's the time he can look back and check. But until then, he's got to presume that Mr. McGregor is on his tail and just about to grab him and make him into a pie. So Peter waited until he got back to the big fir tree to look behind himself because he didn't know he was certainly safe until he was back at the tree. Measuring in metres.
So complete the sentences. Dex is one and how many centimetres tall? Danny is one metre and 21 centimetres tall. So Danny is how many metres and how many centimetres tall? Scott is one metre and 11 centimetres tall. So we could write that as Scott is how many what and how many tall? So in your books, I would like to see A and I would like to see the sentence. Dex is one and eight tall. And then B, I would like to see Danny is metre and centimetres tall. And then C, I'd like to see Scott is and tall. Please pause me now. So you can see here, do you agree with Ron? Yeah, I am one metre and eight centimetres tall. And you can write that instead of writing the full metre, you can just write an M and yet CM for centimetre. Remember, centimetre begins with a C, even though it sounds like an S. And then we've got Dexter is one metre, eight centimetres tall. Danny is one, and they've already done the metre for you, and 21, and they've done the centimetres for you. And then Scott is, you've got to do your one and your M, and your 11 and your centimetres. Class two are measuring poster paper for an art lesson. Nisha puts the paper next to a two metre stick. How long is the poster paper? So how many metres? I told you how many metres and how many centimetres. Pause me now. So you can see it's just above the one metre mark. So the paper is one metre and how many centimetres? So we're just over the 10, 11, 12, 13 centimetres. Daddy bear is two metres tall. A baby bear is half as tall as Daddy Bear. So how tall is Baby Bear if Daddy Bear is two metres tall? How tall is Baby Bear if he is half as tall as Daddy Bear? And B, Mummy Bear is taller than Baby Bear, but shorter than Daddy Bear. How tall could Mummy Bear be? So that is, we don't know exactly how, we know exactly how big Baby Bear is. We don't know exactly how big Mummy Bear is. So in a moment, you're going to pause me to figure out the height of baby bear and once you know the height of baby bear because it's exactly half of daddy bear and daddy bear is two meters once you know the exact height of baby bear then you can have a guess how many meters and how many centimeters mommy bear is going to be pause me now so you can see baby bear is a meter because um, one meter is half of daddy bear's two meters a uh, mummy bear could be one metre and 42 centimetres tall. But that isn't the only answer. She's in between. So as long as she's bigger than a metre and smaller than two metres, as long as you don't have one, two metres in your metre box, as long as you have one metre there and all your centimetres, you can have your centimetres from one centimetre up to 99 centimetres. So you've got lots and lots of different options of what your mummy bear could measure. Email me your answers and we can check them together. Okay, I would like you to read clue for the biggest clue. This sounds good. This sounds like we're going to get this. So the biggest clue. Pause me now and read what your biggest clue is asking you to do. The biggest clue you will have have found will tell you if the carrot thief is a boy or a girl. Look at the sentences below, we're going to have a look in a moment. Each sentence contains a word which has the suffix er or est. Work out if the suffix has been used correctly. If it has, give the sentence a tick. If the suffix is incorrect, give the sentence a cross. If there are more ticks, the carrot thief is a boy, okay. If there are more crosses, the carrot thief is a girl. Ooh, let's have a look. So I don't need you to write this whole thing out in your books. Again, you can just do a tally chart of ticks and crosses. OK, so the first sentence, this is the biggest mystery I have ever known. Is the suffix EST, is that the right suffix to use here? If it is, give it a tick. If it's not, give it a cross. I don't think Mr. McGregor has ever been sadder. Is that correct? If it is, give it a tick. If it's not, give it a cross. So I want you to work your way through and see 
if the er uh and the est have been used correctly. Pause me now and make your list of ticks and crosses. Pause me now. So you can see here, we've got biggest, sadder, and nicest have all been used correctly. So we've got three ticks. We're on a we're on a quick run there. So the boys are out in front. I chased the thief, but they ran fastest than me. Oh no, fast. There isn't it? So it's across. Mrs. McGregor has never been madder. Yeah, she has never been madder. Not maddest. She has never been maddest. Wouldn't work. Mr. McGregor has the bigger garden I've seen. Oh, I'm, I'm tricky to even read that. Mr. McGregor has the bigger garden I've seen. It should be biggest garden. So it's across. I've never tried to solve a harder puzzle. Yeah, tick. I wonder if the thief was smallest than an ant. Smaller than an ant, please. So that's a cross. The carrot thief must have been smarter than me. Tick. Next time, Mr. McGregor will be older and wiser. Tick. So there are seven ticks, three crosses. That means there's got to be a boy. So let's go through our list. Benjamin Muddy is still in. Is he a boy? Yes, he is. Could be Benjamin. Tinker. Cottontail's already out. Flopsy. Is Flopsy a boy? No, it is a, she is a girl, so she is out. Mopsy is also out. Mr. and Mrs. McGregor are also out. Mrs. Rabbit, is she a boy? Nope, she is a girl. She is out. Or Mouse is out. Peter Rabbit, is he a boy? Yes, so it could be Peter. White Cat's already out. So uh, uh, we've got Benjamin. Or oh, we've got Peter. We've got people are going to find out who it is tomorrow. Okay, commas in the list. We're going to be doing some more work on commas. They're important to know how to get Bob on, especially when you're going into year three soon. So commas are used instead of and to separate items in a list. A comma is not normally used between the final two items in a list. Instead, the word and is usually used. We did some work on this yesterday. So an example would be Mrs. Rabbit's children are called Flopsy, comma, Mopsy, comma, Cottontail. We're getting ready for the last one. So we use the and Peter. Here are some sentence starters which need lists adding to them. You can make up the details in the list. Remember to use commas correctly. So it's not important what's written in it. What's important is that you you engage me, you make it creative and you use your commas correctly. So in this garden, in his garden, Mr. McGregor grows. So think of some things and you, I want more than three things. So you can do something, comma, something. And I'm getting ready for my last one and my last thing. So we've got the sentence openers in his garden. Mrs. McGregor enjoys. Cottontail enjoys. You might not know the answers. That is good. It is an opportunity to engage me. Think about what you think Mrs. McGregor enjoys. What does Cottontail enjoy? So pause me now and use your commas in a list. Pause me now. Now here are some more sentences. You do not have to do them all. I would like four sentences so you've done three at least four sentences if you want to do all eight me and your parents at home are going to be super duper impressed but you can choose one more here to write me a commas in a list sentence please guys so pause me now pick which one you want and write me a sentence using commas in a list So here are some examples. In his garden, Mr. McGregor goes cabbages, comma, turnips, comma, radishes, and the last one, lettuces. Mrs. McGregor enjoys sleeping, comma, weeding, comma, snacking, and the last one, planting. Cottontail enjoys rolling in the grass. Oh, and I've put my picture in the way, but you get the idea. You can see before you get to the last one, there's the and. Hi guys, the team in Brayton are doing an incredible job of keeping the community really tight. It's inspirational. They're amazing. So the Brayton Million have put together the idea of a time capsule. And so this is something that I've taken from their Facebook page. I don't know if you want to have a little look more in detail there, but they want stories, they want poems, they want photos of the things that you've been busy doing. Anything that you do, you can bring into school and we can use in school and you can take it to the Times capsule if you do anything electronically, which it sounds like they would like and we would like too. So it's two birds with one stone, isn't it? 
you can do things for them and things for us. So have a little read and get anything off that you've been busy doing. They want to see it as much as we do. One of the things that they talked about was that you could do a news report about your experience. And so here are a couple of ideas about you could any now it doesn't need to just be on coronavirus. It can be on something that you did in the day at home. So it could be a newspaper on what you did during coronavirus and you could do a whole topic on it. Or it could be something really specific. Have you invented an amazing game that you and your brothers and sisters have played? There are no rules about this. You can create whatever you want to create. It also suggests a diary. So we've been busy writing diaries during this time. You might not, they might be personal. You might not want to use that or you might be happy to share, but you could write a diary piece and you could think back to some of the best times and the trickiest times, the in-between times, and you could have a little reflect back and write one piece about your time during lockdown. This is just taken from the Britain Millen Millennium um, web page. So these are all the different things that they're offering. So I'm sure you have. I'm sure you're more aware of it than me. But if you haven't had a look, go and check it out. They're doing some awesome things. This is a little competition for, not a competition, this is a little activity for pen pals. So this is the form that you can fill out on the website. And you've got lots of different options, one of them being that if you want to keep your address private, then that's your choice. And that you can give it to the Britain Millennials, I keep wanting to call them the Britain Millennials, the Britain Million, and they will exchange it for you. So if it's your um, address that you're unsure about, then we can look around that. So that looked like a really interesting, exciting activity. You could make a new friend during this. And then we would like any of your memories, so like the Brit and Million have asked for, we would like for the, your memories of the good, the bad, the everything in between of what you've been doing during lockdown. So if you can provide us with a photo so when we're coming back into school, we can all share these and it'll be something to talk about because we're all going to have had really different experiences. So bring a, if you want to email photos that I can forward on into school if you want to do a little write up there are no rules about this there are no rules about how you can display what it is that you've been busy do doing during lockdown but we'd love to hear and see it please guys so I've put a little here this time has been a big medley of ups and downs as we Think about coming back to school we'd like to create a little book of lockdown start to gather some photographs and begin to share ideas for us to discuss further in school why have you picked this memory and what happened and then we've got a connected curriculum curriculum menu for you to have a little challenge and have a little look at so i know we've had some fabulous maps of britain come in so when you get into the end of that and you've explored some of the Britain I still want millennium millions then you can come back to this so that hopefully that should be enough to keep you busy if you're still looking for more get in touch and we'll find we'll find some more things for you to be busy with